to you on uh, climate change and rivers, which is a little bit the background information, but I think it is of relevance to, to your university. My table of contents is uh, maybe long, but some sections are just one slide or a few slide sections. So I start from an introduction, introductory water cycle uh, scheme, which is very well known. It's produced in the United States, and I think it, it sells everything that is important in hydrology. Water cycle, hydrological cycle, water evaporating from the ocean, going over the land and then falling into precipitation, and then flowing by rivers or groundwater discharge to the oceans. So this is a large water cycle, but you have also small water cycles, because uh, water that evaporates from here also falls here. This is also possible. Uh, the reason I showed this uh, scheme is that every flux and every store of water depends on the climate, depends on temperature. It depends on the temperature whether what falls here is a rain or snow in winter. It depends on the temperature how deep or what is the sea level. It is rising in a warmer climate. So uh, I think it's a, it's a good start. And then climate itself. Climate is the average state of weather. So if you talk, if you think about what's going to happen in here, it is climate. We don't know what, we, what will be there on the 31st of July next year. Whether it's going to be hot or maybe rather cool weather like today. By the way, I, I listened to talks be between some of you and some were saying that tomorrow is going to rain all day, while others said no, 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 it's <laughs> not going to rain. And in my, in my uh, AccuWeather I see a uh, thunderstorm, so <laughs> for tomorrow. Tomorrow is weather, it's not climate, it's weather. So it's a vagary yes. of weather. Yes. But climate next year, in, in, in a year from now. Climate change mechanisms. Variations of solar radiation. Changes of solar parameters of Earth movement. This is responsible for glaciations. So in the place we are sitting now, of you are sitting now, I'm standing. There were some three kilometers of ice, 20,000 years ago. And the ocean, I mean, the ocean level was far, far below the present. So much of water was accumulated on the land rather than in the ocean. And here, 66 million years ago, uh, change of composition of Earth's atmosphere, greenhouse gases, dust, aerosols, killed dinosaurs. So a huge uh, celestial ob object falling into the Earth and changing the climate. The greenhouse effect is, uh, I think, obvious to everyone. The sun warms the Earth up to minus 18. So it wouldn't be a pleasant temperature if we had sun only and no atmosphere. Fortunately, we have uh, greenhouse gases in the atmosphere, and that's why we can add 33 degrees. And we have a pleasant mean global temperature of 15, not even more. So solar radiation uh, passes through the atmosphere, right through the glass roof, of a greenhouse, but the long wave radiation partly stays below the atmosphere, between the, between the Earth and the atmosphere. So long wave radiation of the Earth does not necessarily escape uh, into the space. There is no uh, doubt 
that the uh, CO2 concentration in the atmosphere has been increasing. Since last year, it is something like 2.7 ppm. But you see, it's a, it's a very clearly visible increase, subject to uh, seasonal oscillations. Climate change observations and projections. Um, this diagram shows you that indeed the last 10 years, here I show only 9, but 2033 will also belong to the warmest 10. The last 10 years have been warmest on instrumental records. Uh, 2014, the global temperature reached the maximum. 2015 again, 2016 again. So three years in a row, the world record was beaten by the nature. You see, 14, 15, 16. 2020, nearly the record, and 2023, we will see. There are chances for, for the record, record. In the year 2022, you see that in many places uh, the temperature was higher than ever. But in some places it was quite low. And this is particularly important, how the uh, sea or ocean temperature behaves uh, mm, to the west from, uh, from, uh, Latin, from uh, South America. This is a La Nina case where uh, global temperature is, is not record high. So in 2022, it was La Nina. But now, in 2023, in June 2023, it is already warm here. It is already a Nino. And it's likely to last. So this gives some, some chances for a global, global heat. And uh, surface air temperature anomaly may be record high this present year. Um, this diagram that was valid for, June, for early July is outdated already because the nature has beaten this record. It is 1703. I don't have a diagram uh, because uh, the producer do not uh, are kind of uh, surprised by, by the develop developments. And this, this photograph I made in my area near to Poznan, 11th of June. The grass looks like hopeless. It is a rain-fed grass. But some people in Poland do not water their lawns. Uh, so if you don't water, it may look like that already in June. This is something new. So just a couple of hot days and a couple of days without rain uh, leads to this sort of, uh, of grass lawn. Uh, if we talk about the future, we should think about a uh, UN uh, conference, climatic conference, and UN convention. Framework Convention on Climate Change. Uh, we should not allow the dangerous interference of uh, humans with the climate system. What is dangerous? Well, two degrees warming is a threshold, but one and a half degrees warming would be even better. So we should restrict, we should curb the warming below these thresholds. Of course, it is easier said than done. But if temperature grows, there are many uh, adverse effects, like unique and threatened systems suffer, like coral reefs. Extreme weather events are on the rise. Right. Distribution of impacts becomes unfair. 
global aggregate impacts get high. And large-scale singular events like uh, complete melting of uh, Greenland or sometime later of uh, Antarctica are very dangerous. So depending on the warming, we may have this sort of unfortunate adverse impacts. Three categories of water problems. Too little, too much, too dirty. And all three can be exacerbated by climate change. I, I have done quite a bit of study on China and in China. It is a little exotic, but I like this figure because it shows very clearly what I want to say. Namely, there are less days with the rainfall and more days with intense rain rainfall, with heavy rainfall. By Chinese standards, intense or heavy is 50 millimeters per day. So uh, rain is abundant there. So there are more days with intense precipitation and less days with any precipitation. So the day like today is a kind of a rarity. It's a, it's a day that we would like to see little precipitation. We would like to have little precipitation over more days. But the nature is us something different. Catastrophic floods of uh, regional extending Poland. I know that you, many of you are interested in floods. So uh, actually in Poland, the last two major river floods where in 1997, it was Czechia, Poland, and Germany, older flood, but not only older, this US, and then 20 and 10. But since then, since 20 and 10, there were only urban floods and uh, uh, flash floods, but no floods, no river floods of a uh, regional extent. So in Poland and also here uh, in, in Germany, floods are of different types. Can be caused by snow melt, but the last major snow melt flood was in 1979. Here. It was a year with a huge snow cover, winter with a huge snow cover. It can be ice jam, storm, rainfall, and snow melt, snow melt plus rainfall. The number of large floods of high severity and magnitude, it would take quite a long time to de define severity and magnitude, but there is an increasing trend. However, increase is not regular. Look, 20 and 10. This was a flood year with many flood events in Europe. And 2011, only one major flood. So, huge interannual variability. 1997, Czechia, Poland, Germany, the older, 20, uh, 2002, Elbe, Labe, Czechia, Germany, and also Daniel, Germany, Austria, and all the countries on the Danube. Uh, the organizers wanted us to refer to the last year's environmental uh, catastrophe, environmental disaster of the opera. I'd like to show just one, one slide that I copied from the official web page of the, of the state uh, Polish Waters. It's a, it's a large institution. So, on paper, everything is fine. Environment protection inspectorates take samples and analyze samples and uh, determine what was the reason of fish killed. Police and prosecutor's office look for the guilty, look for the culprits. And the Polish Fishing Association collects that fish. Polish waters collaborate with 
with services, support on the spot, and issue information. Well, I had a feeling that it is like, a, like an old saying dating back to, to General Clausewitz, who said that generals prepare to old, old wars. So they, they assume that next war will be like the old war, like the past war, but this is not true. Now we have drones, so the war is different. And also here, the old disaster, like Sandals in Basel, uh, 1987, 1st of November, it was caused by uh, chemicals. Here, the enemy was unknown in that time. Now we know, Parvesium, so we we'll call golden algae. algae. But uh, this is not a job for the police. So emergency solutions like that do not really work. Climate change and war. First, I may encourage you to find this nice report. It's a technical paper. There were four uh, editors in chief, and I was one of them. All UN languages, six languages, sorry, German is not there. But uh, it's a nice introduction to climate change in water, published by IPCC. Increase in the mean uh, is also accompanied by increase in variability. So more hot weather, more record hot weather, and the same holds for more intense precipitation and more flash floods. I had the honor to be a collaborating uh, coordinating lead author of the IPCC report, water, water section. They are the problems that were observed before we finalized this report. So, some of them indeed uh, refer to rivers, like flood protection systems in the Elbe River are causing damage to red purified Aryan ecosystems. We have a German uh, co author who kind of pushed that we have this statement. Or another river, Colorado River. USA was forced to build a desalin desalination plant to provide drinkable water to Mexico because there was an international agreement between America, USA and Mexico and the Americans agreed to provide fresh water to Mexico. So if the water was saline, too saline, they had to build a desalination plant. Uh, next, RRC and the two rivers, Sildaria and Amudaria, Amudaria uh, over exploitation of, of water resources caused a considerable reduction of the size of the RRC. And the last piece of the river, or last example of, of uh, unfortunate development, is the uh, Yellow River, Huanghe, running dry. So all the river water was used for intense irrigation. Well, maybe one more, one more river case. More than 70% of Bangladesh was inundated in the by the flood in 1998. But this is not only river, it's also the sea. Bangladesh is very low. Uh, situated. Um, the water, water needs in, are increasing very strongly and most of water is needed globally for agriculture. So water for food, less water for, for energy and industry and also for health but not, not as much as for produ producing food. 
projections for the future. Um, it was my honor 15 years ago to be a co-author of this paper. Stationarity is dead. So what used to be in the past cannot we cannot assume that it is going to happen in the future. And uh, the message was perhaps like uh, like from the Bible. Who has a lot will have even more. Who has little will have even less. So Mediterranean, they have little water now, they will have even less water in the future. Siberia, Canada, much water now, even more in the future. And again, another, another map from our IPCC report showing you that flooded areas in Bangladesh are likely to increase by at least 25% with every two degree warming. So when I mention that two degree warming is a kind of a safe, it's not safe there. It's not safe for Bangladesh. This is quite interesting, even if it's not a river. Uh, thickness of a small island uh, freshwater lens is likely to decline 25, uh, two, two and a half fold from 25 meters to 10 meters due to 10 centimeters sea level rise. So 10 centimeters, very, very little sea level rise, translates into uh, Salinization of groundwater in the, the Indian islands on the, on the Indian Sea. <coughs> Older, Odra, or Oder, and Vistula are two Polish main, two main rivers in Poland. And we made a study about projections of a low flow indicator over the Odra and the Vistula basins. Uh, this doesn't look too bad. So uh, the, the QL, which is a uh, discharge with the probability of being of accidents at least 90%, is likely to increase. But also high flows are likely to increase. So uh, this is not a good news for people responsible for uh, flood protection. Uh, continuing my Chinese uh, collaboration that has been quite intense, I'd like to show you the title. Drought losses in China might double between one and a half and two degree warming. So for them it makes a difference whether one and a half degree or two degree warming. This paper went quite high proceedings of National Academy of Sciences, and it shows that it, it will rain more in China, but evapotranspiration is increasing very strongly. So it will rain more, but it will evaporate even more. So in many places of China, depending on the uh, drought index you use, they are going to, to be aggravated uh, drought problems. And indeed, between one and a half degrees and two degrees warming, there is a, a doubling of, uh, of losses. Each half a degree of warming increases annual flood losses in China by more than 60 billion of American dollars. So, you see, floods on the rise and droughts on the rise. And this is not contradictory. I explained why is this so. What used to be a hundred year flood is now 70 year flood with a one and a half degree warming, or maybe less than 70 or 60 with two and a half degree warming. Uh, well, take home message is just messages, take one slide. And it is adaptation to changing conditions has always been the core of water management, which traditionally focused on meeting the increasing demand. So 
societies wanted more and more water, and engineers and planners and decision makers tried to supply as much water as societies demanded. Now we think about demand management in different ways. So it's not necessarily to increase the supply, maybe to decrease the demand. Water resources are distributed unevenly in space and time. And this is unfortunate. We would love to have regular uh, distribution. So flow regulation in time is possible if we store water when abundant and use it when it starts. Or in space, we make water transfer. And finally, climate change causes changes in supply and demand and challenges the existing water infrastructure. So what was working quite well now may not work well under change, change conditions. Because the climate change poses novel risks often outside the range of experience. And all three categories, my last sentence, all, all three categories of water problems in categories you don't meet age. Sorry for that. Too little, too much, too dirty can be aggravated by climate change. Thank you. Thanks.